name is Amaris Gonzalez and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I serve as a student life advisor for student organizations and activities at the Office of the Dean of Students that is formerly known as Student Life and Leadership. Thank you so much for coming to the Free Play Project panel discussion as part of One SDSU Community Programming. And just to preface, we will be recording this event. We will begin today's event with the Kumeye land, land Acknowledgement. For millennia, the Kumeye people have been part of this land. This land has nourished, healed, protected, and embraced them for many generations in a relationship of balance and harmony. As members of the San Diego State community, we acknowledge this legacy. We promote this balance and harmony. We find inspiration from this land, the land of the Kumeye. The goal of One SDSU community is to provide opportunities for you to learn about yourselves and the perspectives, experiences, and identities that make you unique, allowing you to connect with other students to learn about their journeys. By having these opportunities, the hope is that ultimately every member of the SDSU community comes to embrace diversity in all its forms, bringing our community together as one diverse group. One is DSU's programming framework has three different themes. And this afternoon's or this morning's program theme is activating community dialogue. Together, we will be engaging in activities that provide learning about identities through self, through both self-exploration and exploring other perspectives. Over the course of today's panel discussion, feel free to make comments in the chat box. And if you'd like to pose a question to one of our speakers, please post it in the Q&A. At the end of the program, we will invite you to share about your experience with the brief survey. We hope you will take a few minutes to share your thoughts. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Eric Smigel, Chair of Arts Alive SDSU. Thank you, Amadis, and hello, everyone. I'm pleased to welcome you to the first production in this year's Arts Alive SDSU Discovery Series which is an annual selection of events that address sociopolitical and cultural issues through the visual and performing arts. We're delighted to continue our partnership this semester with One SDSU, who is sponsoring these interdisciplinary panel discussions. And I'd like to thank Amadis and the team at the Center for Student Organizations and Activities for their ongoing support of arts programming across campus. Today's discussion focuses on the Free Play Project an SDSU production of five short theater works by Idris Goodwin. Designed to prompt conversation across multiple generations and to promote social action, these plays offer insights into some of the complexities of racism, racial discourse, and the Black experience in contemporary American culture. Although the national dialogue on social injustice has become more robust in the last year and a half, most of these conversations have taken place amid a public health crisis that has denied us the crucial element of physical human interaction, the very foundation for developing empathy and compassion. Now that we're gradually reassembling and becoming reacquainted with each other, we can reaffirm the value of theater, which provides us with a powerful shared space in which we can practice not just listening and looking, but truly hearing and seeing one another. We're therefore deeply grateful for our faculty and student artists whose creativity, industriousness, and dedication continue to serve our commun community far beyond the stage. It's now my pleasure to introduce our featured panelists, Professor Danny Badeau from the School of Theater, Television, and Film, and Director of the STSU Production of the Free Play Project, Professor Taharka Ade from the Department of Africana Studies, Professor Marcella Polanco from the Department of Counseling and School Psychology, and our special guest artist, playwright and breakbeat poet, Idris Goodwin. Yes, thanks so much, Eric. Um, welcome everyone. I'm just gonna take a moment to give an overview of the project and, uh, and then we'll dive into some more, to, individual uh, introductions. So my name is Danny Badeau, my pronouns are she, her. Um, and when we thought about this panel, one of the things we wanted to do was share a little bit about why these plays were selected. And so um, Idris, I've been a fan of Idris' work for a while, a long time. Um, he's very well known in the theater for young audiences community and the theater community at large. And this past summer, 
um, our sort of flagship organization, TYA USA, which is the organization that kind of gathers all folks who do theater for young audiences together nationally. Um, they put on a webinar that Idris was a part of. They also put up a website on their website, a link to his plays, these five plays that we're doing. So I got really well acquainted with these plays and more acquainted with Idris and his work. And I was incredibly excited just by the plays themselves, but then also by the also by the um, goal that he had had to spark conversation with these plays. Um, and so SDSU, our, our university needs to be talking about racism. So does San Diego at large, so does our whole country, right? So I thought this would be a great thing. I reached out to the Black Renaissance Student Organization, which is a pretty new organization on our campus. And they, um, their leadership, Leilani Snow and Tiara Watkins, the president and vice president and co-founders. And I said, um, I told them about these plays, I shared them with them and I said, I'd like to do these plays. I'd like to be the faculty director, but I would like to see if we can get a team of um, student directors together to do the hands-on work on these plays. And so with the, with the help of Black Renaissance, we assembled a team of seven, actually seven um, student directors, undergraduate student directors to direct these five plays. So there are two teams of co-directors and they're doing incredible work. Um, as, per, as Eric mentioned, we are back in the theater space with these plays um, in the live space with a small invited audience, but they're also being transmitted out uh, live streamed. So if all eight performances will take place live in Zoom, but they will be um, live streamed through the magic of, uh, of Zoom and three cameras. And um, actually Nick Carter is on this call today as well in the, in the attendees and he is the, working the magic that allows us to capture these um, and send them out live to audience members who've signed up to, to watch the show. Um, we, we divided the plays into two nights. So um, we're really interested in conversation. So we have three plays grouped together and then two of the plays grouped together. And we're doing a watch, talk, watch, talk. We're just as deeply invested in the conversation as we are in watching the work. So we've assembled a team of four facilitators who've been working with us all on our entire process. That, and those facilitators, um, some of them are here as well uh, in the attendees. Um, they've been helping us as a community come together to talk about um, issues of race in our own lives and identity in our own lives. And then they will also be facilitating the conversation with the audience between each of the short plays. Um, so it's gonna be a hybrid experience, one which we've never done before, which is trying to talk to folks live in the Zoom space and the theater space, the physical theater space at the same time. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to the Center for Achieving Black Wellness and Anti-Racist Education and the Black Resource Center, both of whom are also collaborators on this, and to thank Arts Alive uh, and 1SDSU for sponsoring this panel and also for all the support with the surrounding activities related to Free Play Project. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Idris Goodwin to, um, as the next person to introduce himself. Take it away, Idris. Hey, thank you so much, Danny. Peace, everybody. Idris Goodwin, he am his, <clears throat> broadcasting from Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's the unceded territory of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho. Uh, I'm here at the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center, when I, where I am the executive director. Uh, happy to be beaming in, joining this. Really honored um, to, you know, see that you all decided to spend some time with the work. Um, I really appreciate it very much, and I'm, I'm at your disposal. Thanks so much. Marcela, do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Dani. Mi nombre es Marcela Polanco. I am a member of the faculty team in the Marriage and Family Therapy Program. Uh, this is the counseling and school psychology department. So I'm engaging in this conversation uh, from the vantage point of the mental health field and the relevance that these uh, conversations about race have for us as providers, as well as supporting communities who are enduring the effects of uh, racism. Uh, so I'm a Spanglish speaker as well from uh, Colombia. Uh, thank you very much. Look forward to a conversation. Taharka, can you jump in and introduce yourself? 
Hi, yes, I'm Tahar Kade. I'm in the Department of Africana Studies. Um, I specialize primarily in African and Afro American history and culture, and uh, a huge part of that involves uh, African literature and folklore. So I'm very excited uh, about this panel discussion, and I thank you for having me here. Yeah, so welcome everyone. So I think um, the first order of business will be just to share a brief clip from, um, I'll just share a little bit about where we are in our process. So we open on Friday night. Um, we open um, evening one, which for us is act free, nothing rhymes with Juneteenth and black flag. And we've grouped those three together loosely around the themes of um, slavery, freedom, and white supremacy. We thought those three hung together. And so um, this, uh, and then our second evening opens on Saturday night and our second evening includes um, water gun, the water gun song and hashtag matter. And again, we group those loosely around the theme of gun violence because both of those plays address that. So um, we th we're actually going to share two clips from evening two tonight. And um, that is, uh, I'll share with you just quite honestly, where we are in a process of theater makers is where we just concluded our second dress rehearsal. We have two more dress rehearsals tonight. So we're still in it. So you're gonna see a work in progress. You're not gonna see a final product. And the things you should know about what you'll see, um, th there are costumes on bodies, which are great. Um, there are sound cues. There are some, the sound cues are a little bit louder than they typically would be and all of that, but they're there and you'll, you'll get a sense of that. The set's not quite finished. There's a set, they're sitting on some set pieces that aren't painted yet, you know, so that's where it is. And it's kind of fun to see it rough because then we hope you'll come see uh, the final product, which you can do, um, you can access that. We'll give you the information at the end of the panel today about where you can get tickets. But the other thing to know is that this live stream camera stuff is for real. Um, I'm a theater maker. I'm not a TV director nor a film director. And it's my first time working with not one, not two, but three cameras going all at once trying to capture this beautiful plays. So um, that's an, and we have all, we have four student camera operators who are brand new to camera operation and learning that skill as well, members of our company. Um, so they are uh, the folks working the cameras. So not making any excuses this work is strong but we it is work in progress and i wanted you to know that as you hit, take a look at it this first clip you're going to see is from hashtag matter and um as you know idris could talk in much more detail but it's a play about two people who've had a long-standing relationship a white man and a black woman and um they're in the midst of a pretty long-standing conflict that's going on over several um several months and uh, lots of social media engagement. And so we're dropping into the play near near the end. Um, and we'll just share a little bit about their dialogue around how they're feeling and thinking about these issues. And then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. So just give me a moment to share my screen and we'll jump in. Wouldn't it be great if... I just wish we could move on. Be ourselves. Be individuals. Just be our own perfect stars. Just be our own perfect stars. When we were kids and we'd have a block party, all the kids would be out getting their faces painted like Spider-Man, bike races. When did we start? I was the only black kid at that block party. I didn't see it that way. You didn't see I was black? I didn't treat you different. Not everyone was like you. And aside, she wasn't always like this. And aside, I was silent. I used to be silent. She used to be real easygoing, a cool chick. I used to hold my breath, breathe shallow up here in my chest. We grew up the same way. But the way we are perceived is different. But that doesn't mean those perceptions are true. The trees and the water are in the same forest, but not the same. Different mass, different volume, different use. 
Are you willing to decrease your mass? Just say it. Black lives matter. Do white lives not matter? No one is saying what doesn't matter. But it's exclusionary. It's contextual. In this climate, it relates to the splitting of black atoms with no consequence. And aside, I really just want to leave. I feel sick. I want to hug Kim and tell her I'm sorry, but also, if I'm being honest, tell her to get over it. Life is hard, and there's no measuring stick for suffering. She can change this just by being herself, not this angry black woman. And aside, I really want to let Cole off the hook. Drop this whole thing. Tell him it's all good, but... I have swallowed myself so many times to make white folks feel less uncomfortable. All right, so that is a little bit of hashtag matter. And I'd love for the panelists to just jump in with thoughts, responses. How can art help people talk about stuff? Well, I guess I'll start with um, one, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's always a simple question, but it's what was the, what was the moment of inspiration for writing this? Um, like, what was the moment you said, okay, this is something I need to put pen to paper? There were, there were a few things, and, and thanks for asking. There were a few things with, with matter, hashtag matter. So uh, I wrote that when I wrote hashtag matter in like 2015. Um, and it was when all the Democrats were starting to have their, um, you know, their when they were starting to do their um, campaigning to become the primary candidate. And so uh, Martin O'Malley, who was a Democratic candidate, was, said all lives matter. He was at an event. Black Lives Matter had started, and that, and the first time I ever heard that expression, Black Lives Matter, was from the Black students at the college here in Colorado, where I work. Uh, I heard them say it, and I started hearing that more and more, because I believe uh, Eric Garner, it may be, I think it was Eric Garner who had just been murdered uh, around then, and that was, I believe that was the response uh, here on campus. So anyway, so that expression's going around and then there's this clip of martin o'malley this democratic candidate saying all lives matter and then the crowd going like boo and him being like kind of surprised right so then that made me think about a that chasm of that chasm of misunderstanding that that for some people it's obvious and for some people it's it, the, the surprise that he had was interesting to me. So for me, plays are about uh, are, are about the different ways of seeing, uh, about um, negotiations, and every everybody in a play thinks that they're right, you know. And so to me, this felt like the topic of the day. But I also was reflecting on my own relationship with people that I had gone to high school with and who now we're, we're all having the debates on social media and people I was really cool with in high school, people that I used to drive around the suburbs of Detroit bumping Snoop Dogg with, who <laughs> I thought were down, are now suddenly acting as if they never were in my house eating cornbread and hugging my, my Black grandmas, you know? Um, so I, I, so all of these things went into it. it was like, this is the conversation. It was like, this is the conversation I'm having. This is the conversation my students are having. This is the conversation that the nation start starting to have. And I always like to write plays at, at, you know, based on like where the conversation is and cause it helps me kind of work through it. And, and I believe it, it'll help other people's kind of process it too. So those were all the different sort of branches that kind of fed into this piece. And because I was working at a college, I wrote it for two students in particular. So there were two theater majors, uh, shout out uh, uh, Alex Farr and Alex Sarche. Um, it was not a prerequisite to have an AL first name, it was just a coincidence. 
Um, and we did it in like the screening room. We didn't even do it in the theater. We just like, uh, we wrote it, we rehearsed it, we did it in the screening room. We had a bunch of performances, people came and, and, um, and, and that was that. So it's the first, it's the OG, it's the OG of the free plays. It was the, the very first free play uh, that was written before I knew I was gonna do this thing called free play. I was trying to let y'all go first because I knew, see, I, I give long ass answers because you was like, so brother, what, what was your inspiration? I'm like, well, okay, so you remember He-Man? Like, anyway, so yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask uh, as well, because <clears throat> this really does bring you back to, to different conversations I was having around this time, where this notion of um, being excluded, right? And how just the whole dynamics behind that, whereas since the beginning in this country, black people have always had to deal, deal with the notion of being excluded. And then here comes this hashtag, and then, you know, there's other instances, but this is hashtag where it's, well, all lives matter, you know, where white people are feeling excluded or as if, you know, someone is saying your life doesn't matter. How is that? Um, how do you respond to that today? That's a question for me, I assume. I mean, it could or just for the world. It's for you. It's for the world. You know, okay. but okay. but yeah. you you can go ahead and and give your thoughts too. I, I talk too much, Marcella. What do you think? I am very interested in hearing your response. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, so Mike, the comedian Michael Che has a tremendous, tremendous bit about this, about just that word. <laughs> He's like, we're not even saying black people are the best or black people rule. He's like, just matter. <laughs> you know I mean, just, just matter. Not even. And, you know, and he flips it and he says, you know, that's like your, 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 your spouse saying, uh, you know, don't you love me? And saying, I love everybody, right? <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's um, it you know it just speaks to the fragility, you know what I mean? Just just the just the fragility, I think, and the and the and the lie and the myth and just all the sort of the the deeply psychological um, state, you know, and trauma and 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 insecurity and you know we we're we're a broken family. You know what I mean? And we need to talk for real, like elephant in the room, like just get real, you know, because yeah, it's totally an emotional response. It's a very self-centered response. It's, it's rooted in a ton of fear because I think the, the real response is if I agree that Black Lives Matter, A, that means I have to confront the past and the present. And I think people just don't want to do that because they don't want to be uncomfortable. <laughs> people don't even like to be, people don't even like to be like hot in a car. They're just like, oh my God, open the window. I'm not going to make, you know, we're very fragile. We're very, like human beings are very fragile, but certainly like the lie of whiteness totally leads to a ton of fragility. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, that, that, that's, but, but to me, I was like, I got to write about this because it's all about, it's all about emotions and perceptions and fear and just all that stuff that, that I think makes great drama, you know. I, I think it's, that is the emotionality, the sensitivity, the sensibility of the work is um, so critical for us and from the mental health field because we tend to um, medicalize, pathologize trauma. Right? It becomes a diagnosis, it becomes an internal psychological problem. But this in the way that you portrayed and created this conversation is it brings it back to the social, uh, to a political, uh, platform, right? And I, I just um, I found it so brilliantly in the way that you uh, presented both uh, real life characters in a very clear, they are standing in their convictions, right? And the way in which the um, 
white discourse, if I can put it like that, um, reproduces this, this idea that all life matters is this notion of equality. We are all the same and that denigrates difference. There's no opportunity to be different, right? And I'm listening uh, as a person who has been racialized in this country as a Latina woman, and I'm foreign to the history of uh, slavery um, and discrimination of this country. I bring my own as a Colombian. And so I listen across also our differences, um, the differences that our skin portrayed socially and how uh, in our differences, we're confronted with the same discourse. We're all human beings equal, uh, erasing completely all the unique experiences of colonization and slavery. And that in that brief conversation, it's like, a, Danny, you share like, I think there are like two minutes and in those two minutes, like my skin is engaged, you know? So it's so um, powerfully the way in which the conversation is uh, portrayed and puts us in a witness complicit as well of this. And so I'm sorry that I don't wanna go too long, but I am also quite intrigued about your creation of the white um, character, if I can put it like that. How much research did you really have to do <laughs> Because I can articulate how white lives uh, in life, but I'm not sure that white people can articulate how we, or we, would they be able to create a, a character of color? So much research did you have to do to create the white character? I'm curious. So uh, the, yeah, great question. Thank you for your comments too. Um, the, the filmmaker Spike Lee, I remember he said this uh, in an interview, he was saying black people know everything about white people. Um, and I think he meant that not literally, like I don't literally know everything about every white person, but I think he means about, again, this idea of whiteness, this construct of whiteness and what does it mean to be white? Because it's in school, like, you know, his, history, American history is passed off as just something white people did film, television, literature, sport, you know what I mean? All that stuff, you know, our, 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 the predominant perspective um, is, is that, you know, white folks, you know, did everything. And, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. gave a cool speech and that was kind of it, you know what I mean? Um, and so uh, all that to say that, um, you know, this is, you know, white folk, have never been shy about letting us know how they feel about things. Um, it's only been recently, very recently, uh, that people of color are actually given a platform to speak freely to large scads of people. We've always found other ways. We found ways through art and literature and gathering and protests and all that. but. Uh, the level of clarity with which I'm seeing more BIPOC folks be able to speak and engage uh, is, is very, 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 very recent, very recent, um, because I've been writing plays like Free Play my whole career, and um, this, this space is very different than the spaces that I, you know, I was very much on an island before. It was much harder, and now it's, uh, there's just far more people equipped to create platforms for this kind of conversation and this kind of work. So I know you asked me a very simple question. My, my simple, yeah. Uh, so all that to say that, you know, my job as a dramatist is again, is to, um, I think char characters are, for me, characters are defined by what they do and, and their choices. You know, what they do, what they don't do, why they don't do it. So I start with choices um, and intention first. Um, but then also I'm trying to capture with, with uh, these two characters, um, you know, I'm trying to really capture, um, you know, the, the different perspectives, the different ways they walk in the world, you know, and not trying to speak for every single Caucasian person or whatever. It was more so just like, you know, thinking about how I grew up and a lot of, uh, you know, we, you know, I grew up 
middle, Midwest, you know, middle class, suburban, you know, um, had really close friends who are not black. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, we have very similar upbringings, right? But there was so much that's not similar. And now that we're out adults and we're out in the world and we're making choices, suddenly the way we're living out our lives are very different now, you know? And that was what was really interesting to me is like, what remains, what's the same and, and what's different? And the part of this play that I always gets me is the, the moments where they reflect on this truly human moment where they were just a couple of, you know, young people, you know, a couple of just horny teenagers, right? You know, and just, just that missed moment, you know, this moment where they both were just like a little vulnerable and open, but it just, because of a racialized context, you know her her anxiety around her hair can't happen and to me that moment is for me like the heartbreaking part of where we are you know as a as a nation really a world because you know issues of colorism all that are very global but particularly in america we we've got our own special special seasoning blend here and uh uh so that moment of like possible like it, we were close it could have happened but just this inability to um, find find that area of of safety, you know, and and so anyway, you, you guys really can't let me go on. You gotta you gotta cut me off. I'm I'm very I'm very handicapped here. I'm very I'm at a disadvantage here, uh, uh, because I've been with these plays for so long, and I've got far too much to say about each of them. But I want to hear from you guys. You guys are you're all in both both very nice homes. Uh, you know, I'm very excited to meet you both. You know, I think um, I'm thinking about this play and I'm thinking about some of the, uh, when I read through it, some of the words that come across and just very simple words and ideas like um, um, I was silent and I've been silent for so long. and. You know, it's it's one of those things where the um, I was gonna say the doors of perception then led me to think about a book and an album. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, it's one of the things you know when when the doors of perception is is open, they're open to for you to perceive more things when things are not as you originally perceived them that causes I mean really uh, anyone to um, perhaps want them to be as they were and now but now that those doors are open they can't be closed anymore and um, you know it, it the notion of fragility that you talked about before um, it really takes courage and bravery to stand before those doors and say, um, I'm going to accept what has now been opened up to me. And, um, you know, but humanity, that, 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 that brings about a level of humanity that, that many of us you know, have not reached. And uh, the, the question is, how do we get that to be kind of just normal for humanity to accept um, differences in people because the argument was before that we're supposed to be colorblind right there's supposed to be a colorblind society and you don't see color and that's that was always such a ridiculous argument because there are differences and differences are not bad you know differences make people beautiful you know it, it's it's you don't want um for those of you who've read the giver you don't want, want everything to be gray right <laughs> you want difference you want um variety i mean think about if you just had all you had to eat was a hamburger every day you know all you had to eat was 
a salad every day or something of that nature. So you want things to be, um, uh, if, if, if you're, if you're, and we're talking about this notion of humanity, if you're growing as a person, always coming, uh, into, um, or challenging yourself with different perspectives and different people, different cultures, different ideas is, you know, how you grow as a person, but is how humanity grows as a species. Should you, do we need to move on to something? I was just, there's a couple of questions that have come into the Q&A and into the chat. I was just gonna uh, share one, but if you wanted to jump in, Marcel, I can do that after. Well, I wanted to jump in with uh, gender because uh, um, it is interesting that the character is a young black woman and I'm hearing as a woman of color as well is the young woman that says that she has been silenced. Like this piece about the um, young white man says you used to be different when you were younger, like fun. And she responds, I was silenced. And um, now as a woman, she's saying, I'm not gonna let him off the hook. Like racism, white supremacy, I'm not gonna leave white supremacy off the hook is what I'm, I'm hearing. And no longer swallowing herself as a black woman and spitting out, right? Spitting out now, um, and I think that is, it's a young woman, but I connect uh, to that as a, an adult in academia, as a therapist, how we have been uh, swallowing our color, our consciousness to appease the white, the, not necessarily the white people, but the white institutions, the white professions, the white academy, academia. So I am uh, very much appreciative the position of a young woman being the person um, standing up. And uh, also wanted to reflect a little bit about the idea of humanity that decolonial feminists also critique uh, the portrait of humanity as there's only one version to be human and actually challenge that idea, right? We don't want the white man, Western white man proposal of humanity, so other ways of being and engaging um, outside of that framework. Uh, so yeah, I, I appreciate very much the opportunity to connect to the gender piece as well in your work. Idris, you look like you want to, do you want to jump in on no, that? No, I just, no, thank you. Okay. I, I said, I said, that. I mean, I did prayer hands, uh, but no, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that perspective from both of you a lot. Yeah. I would just offer a question that's come into the Q&A, uh, which is if you were to write free plays, providing a vision of the world you envision, what would these, what would these be like? How uh, that's coming in from. So, 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 so okay. utopic utopic free plays yeah that's what's up i mean i don't know that's a very good question i don't know um i think that um water gun or uh, uh, um nothing rhymes with juneteenth is um not utopic per se but it is a, a really sweet one and it is a very joyous one um, so I, you know, and it involves hip hop. So for me, hip hop is, is, uh, to me, what utopia looks like, you know, it's just, everyone's alive and, uh, um, you know, the theory behind the use of break beats, uh, which is like the, the turntablists, you know, the early turntablists of the seventies were, you know, taking records and just taking the parts they liked called the, the break beats because that's when the people would dance and go crazy. And uh, that's what rappers started rapping over. And they would say that like, when the break beat comes on, you let your God self get loose. 
And, uh, and so to me, uh, I've had some pretty transcendent moments uh, in hip hop spaces and those, those feel pretty utopic to me. Because I do think when you're nodding your head and you're open and all that, you're you're your best, most truest, most loving, open, real version of you. And uh, you know, but vulnerability, love, you know, love love requires vulnerability, and people don't like to be vulnerable. People people, you know, one of the the cornerstones of white supremacy is fear and intimidation. And that's the opposite of vulnerability, which to me is opposite of letting your God self get loose. So um, uh, I guess that's that's what like let your human self get tight, maybe. Um, so uh, I'll get back to you on that one. That's a great idea, and and maybe maybe we could see those 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 plays would be kind of fun. They wouldn't be very. They wouldn't be very. There wouldn't be a lot of tension in those plays, but it, <laughs> they'd just be a nice time. So I mean that's that's cool. I'm cool with that. It would involve a DJ. Is there more? Is there more to say about the hashtag matter clip? We could also share the next clip up to you all. I could certainly offer the, um, and I know Idris, you've met with the students. Uh, like, thanks for coming in and meeting the casting and the directors. And there's been a lot of conversation um, around the, the fullness of the characters, the fullness of the humanity of the white characters, and also the challenge that the, certainly that the white students are having with, with um, taking on those identities. It's been really interesting um, conversations all around. So it's really beautiful to have the experience which only the cast and crew get or the, and the directors around this kind of dialogue in the theater space. It's not, as you were sharing earlier, it's that feels new. Um, and the willingness uh, for the department to not only be open to a play that is half dialogue and half, an evening that's half dialogue and half theater, but also um, and to allow student um, directors to take the lead in directing plays, just to, to say out loud, that's uh, never happened in our theater, in our department. So um, it's really, a, it's, it feels like a powerful time in terms of openness um, to this conversation and to maybe looking at and doing things slightly differently. So that's been really exciting. And the conversations in our rehearsal space have been really rich. That, yeah, can I just say, that makes me really happy uh, because that that's, um... I, I just threw these plays out. I, I just kind of threw them out just with a hope, you know, it's like when you put a message in a bottle um, and, you know, it's like, I did it cause I want, I needed to do it and at the time, you know, I put them out last uh, summer of 2020 and um, the week of Juneteenth and everything and shout out TYUSA and, and um, the new victory who helped create some curriculums for it, but we had no idea what was going to happen or if folks were going to connect. And the way that people have sort of organized their communities around these plays and brought in people like like our two esteemed uh, guests here today, like people from outside the world of theater, like that is really, that makes me, that just pleases me a lot. Because I think that's what theater should be to me personally. I just, I think it's like, an invitation to gather and have dialogue and all that stuff and and maybe it's my my baptist church upbringing that 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 provides me that this idea that we do everything there we have a social hall we have Sunday school and choir and music and talent shows and you know everything and and we're all there to to do very to express ourselves in in multiple ways um so i appreciate you saying that and and appreciate you know again just appreciate everything that that you all have done to put this whole thing together. It's really gratifying for me. Yeah, it's really been great. Um, it's really been powerful. And I'm just looking to see, how, are we comfortable to shift to the next clip uh, from Watergun. And I'll preface with um, Watergun with saying that um, this is the we have what this is the one of the five plays that Idris has written that is cast with Latinx 
to Latinx actors. And um, it's been a re that also has been a rich, rich, rich conversation among our company, um, which is which is all of the rest of the pieces where Idris identifies brown skinned, those folks are identifies black. And in this play, the brown skinned actors identifies Latinx. And it's just been a rich conversation around what does it mean to those two women to have been the two uh, Latinas in the company? What does it mean to, what do these issues mean in their community? It's just been so powerful. Um, and it was a complete, um, you know, they were they came in and they were fabulous and we cast them. And then it, who knew that it would open up this whole other avenue of, of dialogue? It's been beautiful. And we hope that will continue to, both today and in the evenings when we share these in our conversations in the space. Um, so if you'll bear with me, I will share my screen once again. You would think that after all this time working in Zoom, right, that I'd be better at this, but Give me a moment, everybody's seeing everything that's not anything. Um, okay, I just need a second. Here we go. We just have fun. Hey, and you know what else? What else? We had a huge water fight. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. It was so awesome. Cindy's mom filled up this bucket with water balloons and buckets, and you know what else? What else? Um. What else? Nothing. Well, now you got me all curious. Tell me. It's nothing. Was it water guns? Was a water gun sent? Hey. It's okay. I'm not mad. You're not? No. I understand. You were having fun. It was so much fun! And when you're at someone else's house, that's fine. It was so awesome. Cindy has this one that shoots the water so far. Oh, yeah? So far! <laughs> but Cindy knows that when she comes here, we don't do that, right? I told her that. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I told her and her mom and her dad. And what did they say? They didn't say anything. Nothing? Nope. Just did like this. Well, what did you say? I said we can't play water guns at my house. Did you say why? No. Well, Sam, you have to say why. But I don't know why. Of course you know why. I don't know why. Sam, come on. We've talked about this. But I don't understand. A water gun is plastic, and it's colorful, and it's just for water, and it's not for real. But it's a gun. For water. There are guns that light up and make noise, and there are guns like space alien guns. Hey, you remember when it was our days? to bring snacks to your whole class. We made sure to find something that everyone could eat, right? Yes. Why did we do that? Because some kids couldn't have dairy or gluten or meat. We did that to be considerate of other people's allergies. You know what happens when people's allergies act up? They don't feel good. Right. They don't feel good. They get sick. Well, guns. Make me feel a little sick. Even if it's a toy gun, if it has a barrel and a trigger, I have a reaction. What kind? You know how some nights you have bad dreams? Yes. I have them sometimes. In the daytime, 
even when I'm awake. When I think of you with guns, even toys, I have quick bad dreams in my head. What kind? Something happens when toys are in the hands of children, especially little morenito skin children like you. What happens to them? Sometimes grown-ups can't tell the difference between something being a toy or being real, even if you're just playing. Not everyone is in on the game. Oh. Water gun song, so sweet. Thoughts about this piece? I mean, first of all, <clears throat> shout out to those two actors. I totally bought the age difference. So that's one, a um, hundred thousand uh, percent. Two, yeah, I mean, this is definitely um, the first time uh, I've seen it performed um, by two non uh, African American black actors, and so it was really cool. It was lovely actually to 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 see it a different way and to hear it with different different um, affectation, you know, and to see it still it still holds up and and because it, it is a universal thing. I mean, that's what's beautiful. That's the reminder to me. But yeah, it was I was feeling that uh, big time, and uh, I was feeling the first one too. Obviously, feeling hashtag matter as well. Uh, but uh, but this one really. Um, was a surprise, you know, so a pleasant, beautiful surprise. So yeah, that was fun. No song though. You cut it off Danny for the song. Didn't get the song. Didn't get to just people need to, people need to come to the show. I we see, have to no. <laughs> leave them wanting more. <laughs> Please like, come you to the ain't show. getting now. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, three of these plays are quite short. So you saw That's about true. half the play, right? There. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Marcella, how about you? What are your thoughts about this piece? You know, this piece is so relevant. This may sound like a very dramatic uh, statement, but it it's very relevant from Latin America. And I'm speaking about a whole <laughs> continent, right? Uh, but I'm thinking in terms of two um, Latinx young women in US, but thinking about the, the legacies of different sort of violence and different kind of guns that are applicable as well. So it, it's very powerful to be portrayed. And I am taken by also the scene of a mother having this conversation with a young person and I'm very curious about your interest uh, because the work that I've seen uh, from you is emphasized on conversations with young people. So these are very complex racism, colonization, that intellectual conversations about all of these, but you put it in, um, in a form that you can have a conversation with a very young person. Uh, to portray this. And uh, yes, I'm curious about your interest in bringing the work uh, with, um, yeah, conversation with the young people. Well, so, uh, you know, shout out my son, my first son, his name is Taos, he just turned nine. Uh, but just watching him develop, watching how much he loves stories, but also just how curious he is about everything. And um, so again, a hashtag matter I wrote, you know, when he was real young, but that was like for my college students. And then Black Flag as well was pretty much kind of written for that age demographic too. Um, but when the other three, Act Free, Water Gun Song and Juneteenth were very much written, inspired by my son and the conversations we were having uh, in the, in the, cause we were living in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, the summer of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. And immediately in our very, uh, progressive residential neighborhood of, of uh, St. Germain, um, a lot of signs started popping, a lot of Black Lives Matter signs started popping up, and he was asking about those. And, you know, and, and, and during the pandemic, we had also began this practice of reading little plays around the dinner table. Um, so, so that's kind of how it is. But I, you know, I'm, I come from, you know, I've always been an educator, I love kids. Um, and they see it, they see it all, 
they see it. So, you know, all the stuff that, that we grown folks pontificate about and resist and fight, the kids are there too. They see it too. And, uh, and, they, and, and a good friend of mine gave me some really good advice. I was taking my son to the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati. And I was like, how do you have that conversation? It's so big. How do you have that conversation? He goes, just, just expose them to things and see what questions come up and take the time to answer their questions. So to me, I'm like, all right, let's just, let's just approach this from a lot of different ways, right? And so Water Gun Song, there's a door to talk about uh, Tamir Rice if you want to. Uh, with, with Hashtag Matter, there's a door to talk about the history of uh, Black folk and law enforcement if you want to, or, or, or white privilege if you want to, or white supremacy if you want to, or gender if you want to, you know? And so that was all it is, it's just, you know, the plays are not gonna be all things to all people. And that's the point, you know, but for me, it's like, okay, let's do, what questions do you have? What do you wanna know? What do you care about? What, what resonated with you? And, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, but I, I'm devoted and I'm committed to, um, you know, just, 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 just including, just think, considering them. That's all. It's like, I don't even, you know, we have these labels theater for young audiences and all, and that's cool. That's, that's all cool. But for me, it's just, I try to consider the whole family just because I think that that's a very, that's a very universal thing. Like, you know, families engage together, you know? And when I, I was a kid seeing all sorts of stuff I had no business watching yet, you know? Like, you know? I remember I was telling my son, he was getting into Star Wars. And I, and I told him, I was like, Empire Strikes Back, that's the dark one. That's the one, spoiler alert, where Luke get his hand cut off at the end and, uh, and, and find out Luke, Darth Vader is his daddy, spoiler alert. Uh, uh, and my son was like, when did you see this, dad? And I was like, I saw this in the movie theater, which means that I was three years old. <laughs> but that's just, you know, it's just everybody going. What they going to stay home? I'm not going to get no babysitter. Take your, you know, everybody going. Everybody going to go see Back to the Future, you know? So I just believe in family family arts. You know, I just think it's it's, there's no reason why we can't all engage with it on some level, you know? I'm trying to get little followers. See, I start them young, you see, and then I, no. <laughs> mm. You know, it, it absolutely does remind me of uh, Tamir Rice. With, with, I'm, I'm guessing that was the exact inspiration for, right? And um, which, by the way, two months exactly from today will be the seventh year anniversary of his murder. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it, you know, I, and I remember the day uh, exactly. It was, you know, November 2014. And I was co-manager at a bookstore. Just an interesting story about it. I was co-manager at a bookstore in uh, Mobile, Alabama. And my general manager at the time, it, you know, it, it just happened and it was a topic of discussion and uh, he just very casually goes the kids should have been playing with a gun in a park you know and I had to remind him I said were you not just quoting scenes from a Christmas story just a week ago <laughs> where you know this little boy like his whole fantasy is to get this little this this gun he actually gets the gun and you know I almost shot his eye out, right? But, uh, <laughs> but you know, cowboys and 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 Indians—that's like American culture, foundationally. You know, in terms of what little boys are expected to do, um, and particularly, you know, white little boys. Um, and so, and a lot of those 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 early guns—they they weren't green and purple and red. You know, they looked like guns. You know, and so Tamir here he is with a toy gun. And this, I think, less than four seconds, he shot when the cop shows up. I mean, just literally out the door, pow. <laughs> you know, and um, there's, there's no signs that he has harmed anyone or that he's getting ready to harm himself or anything. There's no de-escalation. It's just he's, he's a threat. 
um, with the toy gun. So it's just, um, that, and that, you know, that was my immediate, immediate thoughts when I was reading through, um, the play. Yeah. And that, and yeah, and I thank you for sharing that, man. I, I you know, it really speaks to the, a lot of the anxiety, you know, that my wife and I were having, cause like, I, you know, I, I showed him Star Wars <laughs> and suddenly it was like overnight, it was like a whole new world had opened to him, you know, seriously, it was that powerful to see it happen. And it was a big issue for my wife, you know what I mean? Like she was kind of mad at me, you know, but I was like, I was like, well, it's better than it, it starts at home than I'm, <laughs> uh, but, but, it, but it speaks to an anxiety that we both have about the pressure of raising children, boys of color who are smart, who are really smart, which means that, you know, but they're also little boys, so they don't have all the social graces yet. And, you know, and, and just trying to prepare them for that. So it's like, yes, we need to also, you know, critique America and its violent obsessions and, and how it approaches conflict and normalizes and deifies law enforcement. Um, uh, but we also, until that Shangri-La is reached, we need to prepare our, 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 our kids too, to navigate that. And, um, and so that's, that's what I, but again, if I'm feeling that my wife's feeling that I feel like we're not the only ones either, you know? And so that's, that's usually when I decide to write a play is when I'm like, okay, if I'm feeling it and my family's feeling that we can't be the only ones and stories like the one you just shared you know or why i love this stuff is like you know it's, it's now i you know that story will stick with me as well you know because there is that double standard exactly it's like he wasn't he wasn't in his place he wasn't behaving he wasn't you know that that level of just there's no room for us to just make mistakes or be reckless or what you know it's just like the the cost is so high the cost is so high. There's just no space for us to explore. Um, this is why Afrofuturism is so resonant to Black folks. It's literally about us being in space, limitless space, you know, and possibilities. Other, another world, an alternate reality, another way, a world in which I can run around with my take on, right? Like just, just like all of that kind of. Um, so kind of to go back to somebody's free play question from earlier about uh, utopia. I think they're Afro future plays actually. Maybe that's the wave. Absolutely. Someone asked me how did the manager respond? Uh, deflected and uh, basically said, are you accusing me of being racially insensitive? We have, I have an adopted sister who's black, you know, and that's a whole other conversation when it's you know the the shield of proximity you know i appreciate the reflection about the anxiety among families to deal with and to have conversations because it's like the our practice in mental health right um uh, so neither parents nor therapists ha know how to have conversations, but young people are having the conversations among themselves. And so how do we, the adults, listen to their concerns, right? So I appreciate what you say, like, let's have a conversation, ask questions. What are the curiosities? What, what, what do they know and how do they know it? And how are we influential as well in those uh, conversations? So these plays are also a, a fantastic platform to engage conversations with young people that are complex and difficult. Uh, they're so easily accessible in the way that you portray the conversation. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I again, I, I want to, I want to be, um, you know, access is everything to me. Like, I just want to make it like no fuss, no muss, real easy real available and malleable, as we saw with, with uh, Water Guns on this, this particular performance, like malleable. And um, 
it just opens up so much new possibility of new ways of seeing and reflection. And I mean, that's, 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 uh, that's kind of the goal. So, yeah. There's something also just responding to Marcella's um, comment about how it's helpful for young people that this particular play is so gentle. Um, and yet uh, it sparked just even for Taharka this, you know, direct painful memory from that moment. And for me in talking to white folks about privilege and power, this is um, this particular issue is often the only thing or the first thing that will open the minds and hearts. When I say, listen, as a mom, this isn't an issue for me. I have two sons, Idris, my sons are older than yours, but I don't know, I've never had to have that conversation with my kids. And that privilege, that is privilege, right? And so sometimes this, and this piece for adults, I think will, we'll, I mean, I haven't had the conversations yet, we'll know in two weeks, but that, that this conversation allows a kind of um, take my defenses down and really just hear from my heart wow, actually, if I'm ever questioning where is the difference, where is my privilege in this country, this is step one. I don't have to fear for my, my son's lives. And so um, it's a powerful thing. And I've had the conversations in white identity settings where folks are, are resistant. And this particular conversation will turn people's, um, people's hearts and minds. So I'm really eager to see how this particular piece uh, can have a life on this campus and in this community um, for this very reason. So I really appreciate this piece. It's become, it's become one of the most popular of the series. Yeah. And I, I always love when I see kid actors in it too. That's like a, a really great thing. Yeah, one of the things just for folks who may not be as familiar with the TYA world that, you know, in the TYA world, it's, it's almost always adults playing the, playing the parts for ki of kids. And, and yet I have also seen a couple of virtual productions of, um, of Idris's, of these plays. There have been a lot of them around and I've seen a number of them where it has been kids. And it's so great because they're so accessible to young, even young non-actors. That's what's really beautiful about these pieces that my first time um, opening these pieces up was in a classroom of non-theater artists who want to uh, future classroom teachers. I teach future classroom teachers how to integrate theater into their classroom here on faculty at SDSU in the School of Theater, Television and Film. And we just, we just went into rooms and read them and came back and read them as staged readings. And the students were Literally, I had three or four students say, oh, I understand now how I can have a conversation in my classroom with kids about racism. I, I had no idea how to do it. Now I get it. And I was like, OK, so these pieces, I think, are so accessible for um, non-artists alike, you know, and artists alike. Yeah, they're, they're tool. They're not it's not it's not about it's not about they're not about um, they're, they're using theater as a educational tool uh, and by and but the education is you know it's educating each other through conversation so it's just like this is just this is just you know a dish served you know like you got you know that's it but yeah no the, the end game is not to like find great actors and spy, you know spark great. but you know they could serve that too I mean if there are students who want to learn more about playwriting or learn more about performance i mean you could certainly use them for that too i mean they're 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 exceptionally written and also um, uh but you know there's a lot of different lanes i mean there's rapping and singing and dramas and comedies and you know it's, it, i try to also work on that level level too yeah and and that's why i'm so so cool it's so cool to have uh uh taharka and and marcella here is that you know i want to know more about you know how these works can be used, utilized, or relevant. You know, in non sort of arts and humanity, or not even humanities, but like non arts, um, you know, spaces. You know, I mean, that's something I'm 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 curious about. Is like, what are all the different ways of manifestations that 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 these plays can be used? Because I I'm at a point now. I mean, I've been doing this for over a year, and I, I definitely am wanting to really expand 
and do more, but also create um, a platform for this kind of gathering and sort of continue to do more plays and inspire people to tell their stories and um, and and just really make it kind of a a, a larger space, you know, for for really a lot of because there's so much to it, right? There's so many different kinds of angles and reactions and responses, and, and I'm just like growing, becoming increasingly. Um, uh, interested in being in that space all the time. You know, I just want to say, and <clears throat> I apologize for bringing up something that you guys won't see today, but hopefully you'll we'll see it in the future. But I thought Act Free was brilliant. Um, it was, it was, um, it's something that when you read that history, it kind of occurs to your mind, how did those conversations go? But for someone to put it together, for you to just put together this, you know, comment that, that seemed very real. I, I was very much like, you know, that probably very much how some of those conversations went. <laughs> you know, and, and the, the notion of freedom, right? The notion of, um, it's like some people wanted, they were waiting on like a bell or some type of like visual, you know, but someone just told you you're free, you know, and, and, it, <laughs> and, and so should we leave the plantation? Should we wait on the master to tell us that we're free? Should we, well, he's no longer that you're free, you know, but it's the psychological entrapment that people are in. And I think it imply, applies to many situations today even um if you catch my drift but you know it's 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 uh it, it was a very very i think brilliantly done thing what what was the initial inspiration yeah thank you for saying that man i like that one a lot too actually i um uh, i don't know man i'm kind of a weird guy i like <laughs> i just have a weird sense of humor and and uh, and I love and I'm a student of black comedy. Like I'm, I mean, literally, um, if I made different choices in my life and had a bit more bravery, like I I I went through the rapper door instead of the stand up comic door. So all the years of my life where I could be out till four o'clock in the morning, you know, in a in a little dingy club talking to six people, like I I spent those years doing rap music instead in Chicago. Uh, but I love comedy and I love stand up and, you know, Richard Pryor and, and, and just, you know, Dick Gregory and, and just, you know, that, that lineage of, of black humor um, and how closely it's tied into, uh, you know, the, the, our predicament, you know, and like, and, and it's like the part of the predicament is where the, is, has produced some great humor. I mean, even, even, even like, you know, when people talk about like, should, should black people we use the M word and why do we use the M word and all of that. If you go back to like that moment where, where folks just on a more local level just started using that word, like even that is like kind of hilarious, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's like calling each other that it's, it's a, it's a, diffu it's a, it's a, dis it's, it's ironic, right? It's the, it's the most beautiful irony of all it's like this word that i'm gonna use to demean you is now like it's popular culture now right like even that even that for even that tool of abuse we took and turned it into like culture we're that amazing that we took that and turned it into culture now we can have a whole other panel discussion about the double-sided uh, uh sandpaper that it is but facts are facts right like no other no no other culture does that right like it's amazing it's tragic but it's also kind of hilarious so act free kind of came from that space of I think I also I don't know I think it's the most kind of dangerous play of all five um, I'm kind of waiting for the day that that uh, a respectable, uh, you know, black woman in church hat tells me that that play is disrespectful to the ancestors, um, and I'll take that. Uh, but um, yeah, to your point, and what I'm so glad of that you said is like it probably went a little something like this, right? It's like the point of this is like 
can you imagine? And, and it's also intentionally very unspecific because it, it really is a meditation. It's supposed to be just a meditation on freedom in the, in the big sense, in the, in the real universal linguistic sense. So you could do, you could set Act Free in some other alternate universe, alien world if you wanted to. I've seen uh, somewhat... Um, uh, somewhat difficult production. and no no offense if any, you know no offense but some people go like really literal with it and and they they like have people in like you know the, yeah it's like a little a little too too much like I think you gotta you can't go too literal with it you know ideally um so anyway so it it really just shot out of me it, it just came from this very um adventurous place um it also came from i think you know it's difficult like for black folks in particular for us to watch you know like there's this show uh it's based on the colson whitehead novel about uh the underground railroad and he sort of imagines it literally as like a road and um i enjoyed the book a lot and I was trying to watch the series, but like the first episode, it's just got this brutal, brutal scene. And I was like, nope, can't do it. <laughs> I just can't do it. It just triggers too much. And so I also like, I have, because I'm a history nerd, I love all that stuff. Like I love, I love engaging with that stuff. And I think there's so many stories that we'll never know. There's so much lost and unrecorded from the history. So we have to keep going back to that time. And it's an important time for our people. Like it, it's hard, but like, we also gotta, we gotta honor those people too, who live through that. So for me, it's also trying to find a way to nod to that time, engage with that time, but try to do it in a way that isn't just pure heaviness and trauma and brutality you know like people had people were funny like black like you know what i mean like they were sh they you know they were funny like you know there were some funny people you and and what was the way that they engaged and what did their sort of you know uh, you know uh curb your enthusiasm type of humor you know you know what what did irony look like then like you know and and so it was really an experiment i didn't know how it was going to turn out i was like people are either going to throw fruit or um or not and so um so yeah man i appreciate you saying that because that's 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 kind of my favorite one uh as well but it's it's not as um you know the water gun song is very pop you know um you know and i get that i love them all but uh i, I do love that one you know I, th I think there's always a very a thin line between drama and comedy you know it's uh i mean some of some of the best to me comedians are very good at drama um jim carrey um uh what's his name why is his name not coming to me? Mrs. De uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams, yeah. Um, you know, so it's it's and and even if if it's not on stage, if it's not on screen, even in our heads, you know, just imagine you mentioned Star Wars, Star Wars earlier. How many black people expected that helmet to come off and it'd be James Earl Jones? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Even though we knew it wasn't going to be, you know, like, but, but it, it's one of those things. Uh, but one thing I wanted to, to ask you, um, this notion of this, these being free plays for the beginning, our cultural property, right, has been taken and exploited and you know used for other people's gains while we were denigrated for it right um you think of how the music industry in this country started how a lot of entertainment industries in this country started so um in that context was it sort of kind of like liberating for you for it to be you know free plays or how do you think about it in that context? Yeah, so I, you know, I, I came up, you know, it was it was hip hop music for me. That's where I started expressing myself and writing. And I moved to Chicago, and I was in groups, and you know, we would we would make the flyers and book the gigs and do the email lists and 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 you know, 
all of that. Like we were, I'm just used to like, I came up and then I'm doing this in the, you know, I'm, I'm also like coming up in the nineties, you know, and, and the boom of independent music, independent hip hop labels in the Midwest, like Rhyme Sayers and, 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 you know, just, just, you know, I, I'm just coming up with like, it's just all about doing your own thing, you know, like Spike Lee, you know, made uh, his films, you know, on his own, you know, and, and, and max out credit cards and just, I just coming up in that era and that those were my artistic heroes. And so, you know, I had my own little theater company and, and I was trying to apply a lot of that independent spirit into this theater realm, which is steeped in, you know, subscribers and, and, you know, development grants and slow, 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 slow process, glacial process, a lot of gatekeeping. And I, I've, I committed myself to trying to, to, to master both um, just because I was like, I want to make a buck. So I got to play, you know, I want to play, I want to go to the league. Right. But I still will go, you know, go play street ball too. You know, like I need, so I, 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 I just, for this, for me, for this, you know, to me, this was social. This is, this is my form of, you know, protest. My, this is me saying something this is this is history like i you know when they look back on this moment and they say you know you know all these brothers all these brothers and sisters getting murdered and the cops weren't getting charged with it and blah 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 what did what were the people saying you know i want them to be like yeah you know this rapper said this and this rapper said that and this celebrity said this and this professor said that but i want them to also say this playwright said this and because this playwright said this all these other people also said this too. People downloaded these plays and then they said, you know, and so I just, I, I, I the, the, like the in game for me was not the same as like, yeah, if I write, you know, a three act drama for theater X, like, yeah, I want those royalties and I want it to go be on Broadway and I want, you know, all that stuff, right? But for this, the in game is this. Like, it's this, it's conversation, it's connection, it's a movement, it's, it's that, that's, so so for me it's also a way to remind me of like bro like this is what you this this is what this is this is just a different space right like you know this is a different thing you know and i i wrote a um i'll throw it in the chat i wrote a um a, a, a article uh on medium about what i learned just what i witnessed in that first year uh or in the first several months of doing it and it's got a lot of like anecdotes and different ways that different people use it. So I just kind of want to share it with everybody who's tuning in just because A, it was a very long article and it took me a long time to do it. I'm not a good, <laughs> I have ADD and I'm a bad speller. So it took a long ass time. Shout out Jessica Kakusha who helped me write that thing. But uh, yeah, it's a good ass article. So I'm just going to share that in the, in the thing. But yeah, man, that's that's why it's free. It's just because I, 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 you know, it, it, it's just like, it's, it's about, I, I just personally too, man, I just spent my whole life having this defeatist attitude, this cynical attitude about like, you know, racism, all these issues, like I'm just doing my part. You know, someone did their part and, and made it better for me and I'm gonna do my part and make it better for them. But now I'm like, no, it's gonna end in my lifetime. It's gonna end in my lifetime. It's gonna end in my lifetime, damn it. And this is, this is every, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving everything I have to it to that to that obsession that I have now of seeing it in in my lifetime I, I don't care if I'm like mad old I'm fine if I'm mad old but it just has to while I'm still pulling the air I want to be able to say man I'm glad that racism man, remember, remember we had that racism y'all remember that racism <laughs> that racism was crazy Y'all kids don't know nothing about that racism. Anyway, all right, stop. That's the, that's the utopia answer right there. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Um, we're getting the signal from our, our hosts here that we're winding down. Um, I want to just take a second to thank the three of you for joining us. We're going to share a little clip uh, and uh, we're going to um, turn it over to Eric Smigel again to give some information about how to get access to the tickets for the show and all that good stuff. But this conversation has been uh, so rich. And um, Idris, as you said, I mean, what a gift to hear 
from Marcella and Taharka from outside the theater, uh, the ways in which this work impacts you all in the work you're doing in your fields. And we hope that you'll send students to see the shows and we hope you'll continue um, to access this, these plays in ways that work for your classrooms and for your student population. So, um, and Idris, just thank you so much again for making time. I know your, your schedule is tight. So thank you very, very much for being with us today. Listen, um, when you, you said, hey, we're gonna gather and talk about these plays you wrote, it was not exactly hard, so. <laughs> right right and i get to hang with marcella and Tarka. these are my new my new play cousins <laughs> thank you so um they'd like me to share another clip from this is the promo hot off oh danny you've muted yourself talking 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 you know um i'm gonna credit the person who made this with his name, whose name is Joseph Ruiz. And it's a 30 second promo and it's super cool. And I'm gonna screen share it thusly. Oops, <laughs> why not? There it is. Do you see it? No, you don't see it. There we go. Now you see it. Back to you, Eric. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone. What a tremendous blessing to have all of you together in one space to share a space together uh, for such a lively and inspiring and beautiful conversation. Uh, and let's all thank Danny, Idris, Marcella, and Taharka for such a stimulating session. We're very grateful. And as a reminder, as Daddy mentioned, Performances of the Free Play Project will be live streamed beginning this Friday, September 24th through October 3rd. And if you would like to pick up tickets, you can do so at the website for the School of Theater, Television and Film, the link to which will be posted in the chat box. Um, we will be emailing a survey to everyone who registered for this event, and we would be grateful for your response as it will help us improve future programming. Uh, we also hope you attend other events sponsored by One SDSU and Arts Alive SDSU, which you can learn about at one.sdsu.edu and artsalivesdsu.edu. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us this afternoon and enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>